Come on! <laughs> Go on, Enzo! Yes, we're your right, Jim. It's not done. It's not done. <laughs> Yes! Look at our This is a this <laughs> is a top performance! <laughs> Look at our I think, I think the message from Rice is loud and clear. It is not done. Uh. <laughs> I think we heard that. Ooh, it's we, not done. We're happy with that performance. To be honest, Al, um, it was a like I said, it was a great game for us to switch <clears> the first goal. But you know, listening to people saying about the men's the boys um, of like the experienced players have not turned up in games, not done well since we got knocked out of Europe, simply because of a few icapi results at a time of the season where people are putting under pressure. I think that kind of result, going to that St James's Park at this stage of the season against a Newcastle side in the best form of the um, of, of the season at the right time for them and beating them is an unbelievable result for us. You need a sip of water. Get the post for Newcastle eight minutes in. The overturn of Newcastle's penalty. Alan Shearer. Well, first of all, they worked the corner really, really well. Um, the referee has given the penalty. Um, and then, he, obviously, he's been told to go to the screen. Michael Salisbury in Vietnam. Michael Salisbury feels as if that, that's hit his leg first. Now, what do you think? I don't. I'm, I've looked at it six or seven times, and I can't tell you for certain that's hit his leg first. I'd be fascinated to hear what Dermot says, because if it's taken the referee seven replays to look at, then it's not clear and obvious, which is then it has to be an overturn for it to be an absolute howler. I just don't see it. I keep watching it and watching it. I'm waiting for him, for someone to tell me it's definitely hit his leg and I can't see it. But when I, when I look at it, and obviously people say, I always ask, when you look at that, the reason why you're, you're vexed as you are out is because that looks to me like it's hit the top of his thigh. Why are they looking at it so many times? That's the problem. They don't need to look at it so many times. You can see that Kivio's arms You're, you're happy, that's clear Of course and I obvious. am. Of course I am. I'm, t I'm totally happy with that because they've looked at it too long. It's come off from the top of his thigh. Where's Derm? <laughs> Derm and Gallagher. <laughs> We've got one one way, one the other. Are you happy with the overturn? Yeah, I think it has hit the top of his thigh, Steve. You think, Dermot, or you know? Well, I'm convinced it's hit the top of his You're thigh. You're 100% certain that's hit the top of his leg and it's an absolute howler from the referee? I think the fact he's given a penalty that I don't think is handball. Can you answer the question? Yeah, I think it is a howler. You're absolutely 100% because... certain that's hit his leg on the replays that you've seen, because I can't see it. You must have better eyes than I have. And why is it taking oh, seven replays if it it's that certain? There it is. Well, Dermot, I... stick to your guns. I'm convinced it's hit the top of his thigh. What yeah, you would yeah, say, uh, you're 100% certain it's hit his thigh. Yes, yes, and what you would say, Alan, is once Chris Kavanagh goes to the screen, it's his decision. He can make. He's got all options. He can still stick with a penalty. He can say, "Yeah, I've made a mistake." Well, why, why, why would it take that many replays if, it, if, if, if he's if he's certain? Why is he looking at seven replays if it's that clear and obvious error? I don't know why they watch it so often, exactly. Alan, but I, I think, in my view. Once you look at it, I think it's at the top of his thigh. For I me, can't say, I, I'm, not, I'm not certain that's hit the top of his thigh. It may have, but I'm not certain it has. For then, to, to, for it to be overturned, that's what I'm angry about. The problem with that, it may have, I can't tell you for certain that it hasn't. The problem with that is, is that they've taken too long. They, sh they don't need to look at it that long to see it's at the top of his thigh for me. OK. Maybe we're too close to it. Dermot, this will, may well go on after the game, so thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Cheers, uh, Derm. Thank now. you. Doing great Arsenal, stuff, Derm. Let's remind ourselves, three and a half minutes later, did score Martin Erdegaard's 15th of the season, originally from their free kick, righty? Yeah, well, you know, this is against the run of the play at the time because Newcastle started exactly how I thought they would. But when you look at this, you know, again, Martin Erdegaard's got himself in a position where he's got a load of time and space, and that's all you need. Bang, through the legs. And it's in, and it's, it's kind of settled Arsenal down. It made R Newcastle realise that they've got an, they're going to have a problem if they go gung ho. Look at it, Al. See, he's, he's got to get out close. He's too deep, isn't he, Joe yeah. Linton? Mm. He's got to get closer to the best player on the park, Odegaard, in that first half. He's ran the show. He's mm. controlled the game at his pace, and he's been absolutely magnificent. And you can't give someone of that ability that much time to pick his spot, and because he'll punish you. And that's that's exactly what he did. It's been an unbelievable half. Brilliant game. Fantastic first 45 minutes. Martin Odegaard is the difference. And then, of course, right on the stroke of half-time, we saw that chance for him to make it too, which Nick Pope saved. So.
to have one, and we'll get some reaction from inside the Arsenal dressing room. Jorginho, and first of all, the captain, Martin Erdegaard. Well done, Martin. Every question that's been asked about this team in the last few weeks, did you answer them all and more with that? I think we, we chose something special today. To come here and win is not easy, um, the way we did it as well. We had to be very smart, we have to be a bit uh, yeah, ugly at times, and, uh, and I think this is a big step for us, a young team coming here and, and doing all, all the things we do. I think it uh, yeah, shows we've come a long way. Jorginho, how are those legs? <laughs> <laughs> kind of, it will be better tomorrow than the day after. <laughs> but the most important day, we go home with three points. That will, what we wanted and uh, we know this league we know sometimes we can't win every game playing beautiful football the way we want and uh, I'm really pleased to see the our team can play this kind of of games understand that sometimes it's not possible it's not easy to go through just with passes and sometimes you need to fight and uh, I'm very proud of the of the team the way it fought into the end they certainly did. And they took the lead, of course, after that uh, reversal of the penalty in the first half. 15 for the season without a single penalty for Martin Erdogan. Brilliant, brilliant season. Cesc Fabregas levels are talking and you know, how great he was. But you can see where too much time and too much space for somebody who does find that, you know, that kind of scenario, gets that time and space. You can see Joe Linton's too late. And that going through the legs has caused uh, Nick Pope all sorts of problems. You can see it here, you see Joe, he should have been already on his way out there. He should have been near so then by the time this gets to Erdogan or you, you dissuade him from passing to Erdogan, you're closer, not close enough, and then bam, that's enough. That's enough time, it's enough space. I thought Arsenal's midfield were really good today. Uh, when you go up against Bruno, Joe Linton and Willock, at, particularly at St James's Park, you've got to be brave, you've got to be strong, you've got to be ready for the fight that's, that you're going to have to have. And I thought they stood up to it really well today. Really impressed with their midfield. Newcastle did start both halves very quickly. <coughs> Second half at 1-0. Yep. Again, a little bit more composure. There were fine lines today, weren't they? Yeah, there were. But when you get your chances, you've got to take them against the best teams. And Newcastle didn't today. They started really well. They hit the post. I thought tad unlucky with the uh, with the penalty being uh, overturned as it was, but then you get chances again in the this second one half. Now. This one. Then this one again. I mean, yes, that's a really good save, but it should be in the back of the net. It's a good ball in. Look, you're in the middle of the goal. You can go either side of the goalkeeper, but you go you go basically straight at him, um, and that was the difference when Arsenal had theirs. I mean, that is a wonderful tackle as well from Jacker, wasn't it, coming yeah. back all that way? Yeah, well, it's just about to pull the trigger there. Last-ditch tackle, and I thought they did really well there, midfield. Yeah, Arsenal uh, saw Newcastle hit the woodwork in the first three minutes of both halves, yeah. and then they sealed it in the end. Cher was involved at one end, and then ultimately righty at the other. Well, this is, this is what I was hoping that Arsenal would do. You can soak up the pressure. You know that Newcastle are going to continue to come and then try and get yourself in a situation where this kind of situation... One on one, you're going in, yes, you get a bit of luck there, but you're capable of soaking that pressure up and you've got the players, you've got the pace, you've got the capability to go up the other end. And as much as this is very fortunate because it's come off of Shah, this is what you're capable of doing. Because Newcastle have to go at you and you have to get to the you have to be able to get the ball, get the other end and hurt them. And that's what we've done there, and that really did take the wind out of Newcastle's sails. Yeah. No, Newcastle had to push on. They had to go and in search of that goal and they're always going to leave situations where they were going to be one-on-one. -on -one. They did then and again they got punished. Welcome back. So Arsenal have kept their title hopes alive. The situation is now there within one point of City. City have four to play. Arsenal have three to play. Let's remind you who exactly they do play. Uh, Arsenal, of course, concentrating on those three remaining Premier League games. At home to Brighton, away at Forest and at home to Wolves City with Everton away sandwiched in between the two Champions League semi-finals against Real Madrid. Then Chelsea at home, Brighton away, <coughs> Brentford away, and, of course, the cup final at Wembley against Manchester United. Are you, are you seeing any chunk <coughs> of light at the end of the tunnel when you look at City's yeah, fixture? Absolutely, especially with that performance there. Um, we, obviously, we have to win the, those three games, Brighton, Nottingham Forest and Wolves. But, yes, you have to fancy them to beat Everton. Um, but then you've got... they didn't at home. No, and, they didn't. And they lost to Brentford at home. Yeah, so... You're looking at that, you're, 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 I, I can see something, you know what I mean? Obviously, it's wishful thinking, but I could see something, whether, whether it's Brighton or Brentford, you know, you only, need, you only need one of those games where they only get a point or they lose a game, 
And then, like I say, Arsenal know what they've got to do. They've got to win the games. So that's all we can focus on. Yeah, um, they've done their <clears> job <throat> today. It's what they had to do. It was always going to be a tough game for them. And what they've said to Man City now is over to you. Um, tough fixtures for them. It's put Everton away, Brighton, Brentford. They're not easy games, um, particularly when you're fighting on three front fronts um, and also with maybe the biggest in their mind in terms of the Champions League. Yeah. Um, and you're going up against one of the giants in, in Real Madrid, so you just never know. Arsenal have done what they had to do today and they've gone, right, over to you now, guys. Yep, positive day for Arsenal. Not so for Newcastle. Let's see what their manager thinks. Here's Eddie Howe. Yeah, that's a tense, top-level game you've been involved in. How did you see it? Fine margins for us today. Just came out on the wrong side of them. Um, missed some chances, some big chances in the game. Yeah, just wasn't quite there for us today. It could have been. And it's one of those I'm sure I'll look back and uh, rue some big moments in the game that we didn't quite get right. Did you in particular look at that first 10 minutes maybe and think that was the, the sliding doors moment of the match? Yeah, I think, you know, Jacob's chance in the first few seconds, if that goes in, it's a totally different game. Um, loads of little things, I think, that you, we look back on and go, it could have fallen our way, it didn't. But we have to take ownership of that and um, we're disappointed today. Um, felt we probably didn't defend as well as we have done for the majority of the season today. There was a few moments where I thought we were a little bit loose. But we gave everything. I, I agree with your comment. It's a high-level game. I thought it was two teams that were going right at each other. And I think that produced a good spectacle. But we're disappointed to lose. Yeah, and that's what, how far Newcastle have come. They were in a high-level game, second against third, Definitely. and are disappointed to lose. Yeah, and he's, he's right that they did have the moments. And in the big games, and he said, fine margins. In the big games, you need a little bit of luck. You also need that little bit of quality. And Newcastle just didn't have that when they needed it most today. Hit the post a couple of times. And he's right, if they go in, it's totally different. Crowd get back up again after the first 10 or 15 minutes, particularly the second half. But you have to also give credit to Arsenal because they stopped Newcastle's midfield, which has been such a huge part of what they do and how they operate. But I thought Arsenal did really well in that department and they stopped Bruce. And we said before the game, so much of what Newcastle do well comes through him. And he he didn't have his best game today, but it was because of the way Arsenal stopped him. Yeah, Cal Arteta got his tactics spot on again. Today. Yeah, he did, because I think that what he wanted to make sure is that, you know, wherever Guimaraes was, someone was in and around him. So as he couldn't turn and be comfortable, because when he does, it's, it's a problem. Um, and so someone was in his face, forcing him back the other way, you know, passing it sideways, not being able to make him get into, like, because we was, I was really excited about Wilson and Isak up front today, but you, they couldn't quite get the service. And Eddie, Eddie again, yeah, I've never listened to Eddie do an interview where he doesn't talk the truth and, and, and talk sensible stuff, is, is that when you look at the way the game went for them, it's just the margins, you know, with Jacob Murphy hitting the post in the foot, that changes everything, that first 10 minutes. Changes everything. You know, when we, when we spoke before the game about those individual battles, mm. I, the, the, there wasn't many Newcastle players won their individual yeah. battle. Perhaps, well, Murphy yeah. won his battle against Zinchenko because Mik Mikel had to take him off yeah. because he gave him a really tough afternoon and he's one of Newcastle's better players. But when I look at Bruno and Joe Linton <coughs> and Willick... Yeah. And Isak against Ben White and Martin Wilson Nelly. again and Martinelli. Mm. I, co I can't say that Newcastle won too many of those individual battles. Jorginho, I thought, was excellent. Odegaard, I thought, was, was superb. So when you look at it from that point of view, yes, they had key, key, key moments in the game that they didn't take Newcastle, but they have got to flip it on the other side and say how well Arsenal did. Ball world, we're at St James's Park here in Newcastle upon time. I'm Derek Ray, joined here on the commentary box by Lee Dixon. And we've got Premier League action coming right up. It's Newcastle United up against Arsenal. Yeah, really looking forward to this one, Derek. Excite me. Come on, let's see some entertainment. High quality defending. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. He could pick out a teammate. Cutting the ball back. Can they forge ahead? Pointed with that.
Well, I've been watching Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang in various countries for a number of years, Lee. He rarely disappoints. But can he give them the lead? It could be up for grabs. Well, oh. A really committed challenge, and it's gone out for a throw-in. Hayden. It's a weighted pass. It's a cross towards the near post. And nothing positive comes of it, unfortunately. It has gone over the touchline for what will be a throw-in. Shown inside. And he's made headway. Well, they can say a big thank you to the goalkeeper. That was inspirational. Well, that's as good as a goal at the other end. Brilliant save from the keeper. Just couldn't capitalise there. Chance for Dwight Gale. Well, how about that for a piece of tackling to break things up? Bodies forward and the break looks on. Well, so many possibilities, but it didn't happen for them. Well, they might be onto something. Big opportunity. Well, it might still work out for them. The net is staring him in the face. And a goal at the second time of asking. But the keeper has let his team down. Well, as we see this again, Derek, it's easy to be critical. And I'll stress, I've never been a goalkeeper. But surely he's got to do better than that. His mistake leads to the goal, no doubt about it.